Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. This week I'm going to give you a quick pointer for working on your walking bass lines. Specifically, we're going to look at how you can approach developing your walking vocabulary. The lesson material and practice track can be found over at Talking Bass, so just hit the link in the description to play along. And if you like this lesson, be sure to take a look at the simple steps to walking bass on the courses page, which is a total deep dive into everything walking bass and takes you from the absolute basics to playing confidently through any jazz standards over the entire fretboard. So let's look at walking. Now, most of the time when walking through a tune, be it a blues or a jazz standard, you're walking through a chord progression. So you can't just randomly, you know, play around on a single scale or arpeggio, you have to always be looking ahead and targeting the next chord. Now on the face of it, this can seem like a big task. It's tough enough that you've got to be thinking about outlining one chord with the appropriate notes, but when you have to start aiming for another chord while developing an overall arc and journey, that's when your brain starts to fry. Well, that's where developing your vocabulary comes into play. Just as with improvising a solo, improvising a walking line is very much like improvising in everyday speech. When we have a conversation, we have something we want to express and we make use of words and language that we've learned over many years. Letters become words, become sentences. Those are the building blocks that we use when we converse. But we don't think about the individual letters in those words when we talk. We barely think of the words. Our vocabulary is built based on the intent. With practice of talking, we build up a vocabulary of words and phrases. You'll find yourself using the same words in the same way and with the same rhythmic or melodic cadence, even though the overall topic of conversation might be totally different. With walking bass lines, all of the chord tones and scales are our letters, and then the phrases that we create in connecting chords are the words that we can put together in building an overall line. Yes, we need to recognize the nuts and bolts of how these phrases are made, just as we need to know our alphabet and how to spell, but when we improvise a walking bass line in our practice or a live setting, that knowledge of chord tones and scales should very much be taken for granted. They're only letters. The overall line and journey should be our main concern, and to get to that point requires a walking vocabulary. We want to see phrases, not scales. So, with this in mind, we're going to look at how you can get started with developing your vocabulary for moving through changes. For this lesson, we're going to stick to one key and one chord change, just as an example, but all the principles can be applied to any key, and most importantly, any chord change. So, we're gonna be in C major, and the chord change is from chord one, C major, or C major seven, to chord five, G major, or G seven. So for this lesson, I'm not even gonna bore you with running through all the scales and chord tones in one position. You can learn all those away from this video. The point is we're going to have a phrase that uses those building blocks that we can then analyze and see how it works. So we're looking at the application first. So for our first line in getting from C to G over the C major seven, we're going to look at moving from this C here, third fret of the A string, down to this G here at the third fret of the E string. And the line we're going to use sounds like this. Okay, so we've just got C, B, A, A flat, G. Okay, so third fret, second fret, A string, and then fifth fret, fourth fret, third fret on the E string. So that's our first line. So what's happening there? Well, obviously we're on the C major seven, so we begin on the C. Okay, so that's our first beat taken care of. And then we're just coming down through a C major scale, working around the uh, chord tones of C major seven. So we've got C and then B, which is the seventh, so that's a chord tone. Then the A, which is the sixth there, so that's a scale note. And then we've just got this chromatic passing note or approach note leading into the G. So G's on the first beat of the next bar. So C, B, A, A flat, G. So chord tone, chord tone, scale note, chromatic note and then we land on the G. So you can look at all the nuts and bolts in there, you know, we're looking at the scale and the chord tones and all of that stuff, but really we're just looking at a phrase. That's a phrase that works descending from chord one down to chord five over a major seven chord. So as I mentioned before, your knowledge of scales and arpeggios, that's all taken for granted. You want a base level of all of that, but now we're thinking phrases. So we're not thinking letters, we're thinking words. So back to the chord progression. So remember the chord progression is C to G. We're just working round and round on that. So now we're on the G, third fret of the E string. We're gonna move back to the C. So we're on the G and we're gonna move up to the C there at the third fret of the E string. So let's have a look at a line. 
Okay, so there's a line. So we've got G, third fret of the E string, and then I'm playing the open A string, then B flat, B, and then C. So first fret, second fret, and third fret. G, A, B flat, B, C. So that's all taking place over that G7 chord, and we're moving on a little journey from G leading up to the C. Okay, so that's our next line. And if you want to analyze it, you could see it as a G mixolydian scale that we're coming up through, G, A, with a chromatic passing note between the second and the third, or you could look at it as the root note and then, you know, just a little chromatic approach line up to the C. Either way, doesn't matter. It works because we're working around the chord tones of G7, but again, it's just a phrase. We're looking at the overall phrase rather than the individual nuts and bolts. So that's two lines that we now have assimilated into our vocabulary. We have a way of moving from chord one to chord five and back again. So let's just try running round and round on that line. So two, three, four. So you want to play round and round on those two lines until you've really got them memorized. And remember, always be looking at how it relates to the chord tones uh, in there. And then once you've got that, you can try playing with the backing track. So here we've got a backing track just moving between C major seven and G seven. Now, as a little tip, when you're developing this vocabulary, you really want to be listening to the sound of the line. You want to know what it sounds like so you can pretty much speak through your instrument. The line shouldn't be random and just based on some rudimentary fretboard patterns, which is what a lot of people do as soon as they learn some scales. You need to know how that line sounds over a dominant seven chord, moving up a fourth to the C, and how it sounds playing that descending line through a major seven chord, okay? So really listen to how it sounds. So that's a start with developing the vocabulary. We've got a line taking us down from chord one to five and then up from chord five to one. So now let's try the opposite. Let's move up to chord five. So if we start again on the C, we're gonna be moving up to a G. So let's find a G. So we've got one up here at the fifth fret of the D string. And let's look at a line that can get us up there over the C major seven. So here's a line. Okay, so all I'm doing is coming up through a C major scale. C, D, E, F, G. Third fret, fifth fret, A string. Second fret, third fret, fifth fret on the D string. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and we land on the G. So that's a line. So that's another line that we can assimilate into our vocabulary. So once we get up to the G, let's look at a descending line moving back down to the C. So if we're gonna do that, we could just come back down. We can actually just come back down through the scale. So you can see that as coming back down through C major or actually coming down through a G mixolydian if you wanna look at it relative to the chord that we're playing over. Okay, so we've got four lines there. We've got these uh, low two down here. And now we have, so whether we want to move up or move down, you know, making those decisions, we've got some lines that we can use. So let's work round and round those two new lines just to get them really assimilated into the vocabulary. So once again, just up and down through that C major scale. One, two, three, four. Always be looking at the chord tones that are in there. And with the practice track. So now we have both an ascending and descending line for use with each chord change. So now let's try combining them just in that position. So if we start with our first two, uh, our first two lines, and then we can add our new lines in there. So 
So try playing round and round those two, always seeing those little phrases in there, always remembering which chord you're on at all times, seeing how we're targeting the next chord. You know, as we work up, we're aiming towards G and then we're aiming back towards C. Okay, always looking analytically at it. And then you can try with the track. Next, we can move those lower lines up an octave to give us a little more variety. So if we look at the first line, C, B, A, A flat, G, if we take that up the octave, up here, we're covering a little bit more real estate. So again, C, B, A, A flat, G. Fifth fret, fourth fret, G string, and then seventh, sixth, and fifth frets on the D string. Okay, so that's the first one. And then if we want to try G, A, B flat, B, C, that little chromatic run up to the C, we can have. So that's G, A, B flat, B, C, fifth fret, D string, and then second, third, fourth, fifth frets on the, uh, on the G string. So that gives us another two lines. Okay, so let's try playing those two lines round and round with the track. Okay. So now if we combine all of those lines that we've covered, we can start to make creative decisions on the fly and the line starts to sound a little less pre-composed, you know, like a repeating line. So as an example, I'll just work around them in that lower position, okay? So I'm going to use these two lines down here, these lines here, and these lines up here, and just mix them all up for a bit of variety. So you can hear that even with that limited vocabulary, we can start to walk a little more freely around that one to five chord progression. And you can do exactly the same thing for any other chord change with any chord quality. And you'll be amazed at how quickly you can pro uh, progress when you do this. So, you know, we're just playing with one and five, but you could also look at chord one to six or chord two to five. You know, any type of chord progression within a key or moving through keys, you can practice in this way. So lastly, we can switch things up a gear by learning alternative fingerings for our lines. So as an example, if we take this line up here from C down to G, we could change the fingering. So if we start on that C there, instead of moving down B and then down to the A down here, we could actually play C, B, and then the A here at the second fret of the G string, then play the A flat there at the first fret, and then we have a choice. We could either play the G there as the open string, or we can play the G there, fifth fret of the D string. Okay, so that's just an alternative way of playing it. So instead of playing here, we have, so we're not restricted by the position that we're in. We can also learn some of these lines on one string. So as an example, if we take the C major line moving up from C to G, just up through that C major scale, we can play that on one string. So I'll play it on the A string here. So C, D, E, F, G. Third, fifth, seventh, eighth, tenth fret, okay? Just getting used to playing it there on one string. And then for the line coming down, G, F, E, D, C. Again, G, F, E, D, C. Okay, tenth, eighth, seventh, fifth, third frets on the A string. So that's just on a single uh, string. And you could also play uh, chromatic lines on one string. So if we look at our, uh, you know, chromatic line moving down from the C down to the G, if I played the C up here at the tenth fret of the D string, we've got the C, B, a, then A flat down to the G. So this is really good for getting to learn the fretboard a little better as well. Okay, and then if we want to come up, if we were playing from the G, 
G up to the C, that little chromatic line, G, A, B flat, B, C. Again, one string, G, A, B flat, B, C. Okay, so that's a good way of getting around the neck. You know, if you know a line, if, I've, if I'm on the C up here and I want to move right up. Okay, I'm up on that G. Okay, so you can move up into another position, hang around there for as long as you want, and then you can just come down using those single string lines. So now I'll just demonstrate a walking line around the neck using only the lines that we've covered. So remember, this is just one chord progression from C to G, and we're only using a very limited vocabulary. Two lines from each chord, but obviously as you practice walking more and more, learning different tunes with different progressions and all the common changes, you'll start to develop a very varied vocabulary. And before you know it, you'll be walking around all over the fretboard without having to think too hard about all the letters or the chord tones and scales. You're just thinking about putting words together into meaningful sentences. So give this a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Remember the drum tracks and lesson material can be found over at Talking Bass, just hit the link in the info below, then sign up to the free Talking Bass membership to gain access to a ton of practice material and free goodies like the Scale Reference Manual ebook. Okay, I'll see you next week.